Hello guys, uh, in this video I would like to explain about a trend analysis using main Kandal test. Uh, you may be aware about uh, the trend in the data and then how to detect that trend. There are various statistical methods. Uh, you can use simple linear regression as well to find the trend, but there are some restrictions or you can see constraints uh, that we cannot use regression analysis for all data, data type. Uh, particularly like the environmental data, climate data, and hydrological data. In that case, you need to use some non-parametric test uh, like Menkendall is one of the most widely used test uh, for trend analysis. This video is basically uh, reserved for the theoretical background, the theory, to understand the theory uh, behind the Menkendall Man test uh, we simply we say MK test, so we need to use uh, uh, to test the uh, to see the theory and the the test statistics. To test the test statistics, uh, to see the test statistic and the procedure behind the men can the MK test. And the next video I will. Uh, I will explain that how we can implement this in R and then followed by a video in, in Python so that you can have a better understanding and you can uh, easily interpret your results. This video will help you in the interpretation of the results. So I, in, in my opinion, uh, we need to work uh, like, you know, in two phases. One is theory. We should know the theory behind the model, the method, the test, and then we should, uh, then we can implement in any language, Python or SPSS or Microsoft Excel. So the theoretical background or the theory of the test or the model can help you to interpret the results uh, easily and easily understandable. So this is the steps, you know, uh, uh, that's why I'm doing the theory first and then the, the applications. So let's uh, dive in. Details of man Kandal test, MK test. That what is the, who developed this? What is this test and how we can use this? Uh, and what is the test statistic and so on? Let's do this. Okay. Uh, so this is you know I have made some slides so you can see this. The left side is some detail about you know the history of this man Kandal test. The man Kandal test, uh, MK test. Normally in literature we say MK test was developed by into two. Key stages: Kendall Tau, statistic developed by Morris G. Kendall in 1938, introduced rank correlation method to measure the strength of monotonic association between two variables. So, rank correlation means you rank the variable, and then you calculate the correlation between the ranked. Now, in uh, in the rank correlation, then you when you rank the data, then you are not using the original data; you are just using the rank the ranks of the data and calculate this association, the increasing or decreasing uh, association. Men's application uh, for trend detection, adapted by uh, Henry B. Mann in 1945. So he adapted this for trend detection. Applied men Kandal's method especially to detect monotonic trend, increasing or decreasing trend in time series data, e.g. climate and hydrology. Particularly, this is very important this is categorically mentioned that climate, hydrology, and environmental data. So this is some, some history. If someone asks you, you can have some detail that initially that was Kandal Tau that was developed by uh, this Mr. Kandal in 1938 for to calculate the rank correlation, you know, uh, for monotonic association between two variables. But then after, you know, after a few years, seven, eight years, uh, man, Henry B. Mann, adapted this for trend detection. So this is a brief story. You can see detail if you want. Now, the Menkendall MK test is a non-parametric statistical test widely used for detecting increasing or decreasing. Okay, so this trend may be increasing or decreasing in a time series data, especially in environmental and hydrological studies. It does not require the data to be normally distributed and it's robust to missing values and outliers. So as I said already uh, in the introduction that 
you can use other method as well like regression analysis and maybe others but they are you know they are for linear trend and they are required some assumption particular listen mk it is is non parameter no need of assumption and uh, does not require the data is normally distributed and robust missing values and outliers this is very important it is robust to missing values and outliers and perhaps this working for small sample size as well so these are some of the advantages that we prefer to use mcat test in uh, particularly in the hydrology climatology environmental science okay now assumption observers are independent so this is some uh, we, we cannot say you know, those are not those assumption which is normality and this 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 so these are some of the assumptions our uh, data should be ordinal interval or ratio scale because uh, the, you know there are data types or nominal ordinal interval ratio so the nominal is not mentioned here and because that is very basic data types and you cannot use all statistic you cannot use many statistical method uh, for, for uh, to nominal data and so except that all data types are mentioned here except nominal data and then that is detect monotonic trend only not necessarily linear so this mean that it detect monotonic trend only increasing or decreasing now the procedure is let's suppose we have time series data time series data i mean like x1 x2 xn like uh, we say monthly data so that may be january february march if daily data then first second day of the month so this is a time series data be a time series of an observation so the first thing is formulate your null and alternative hypothesis i have done uh, multiple videos on hypothesis testing which is you know some basic course in statistics if you don't know how to formulate the hypothesis you can go there and just watch some of the videos uh, there are some videos which are about the general procedure of hypothesis testing so you can see how what is mean by hypothesis and how we can uh, formulate it so the first thing is formulate your hypothesis formulating your null and alternative hypothesis null hypothesis it's not the null hypothesis is the hypothesis which you would like to test there is no trend or no monotonic trend in the time series data very simple versus alternative hypothesis there is a trend monotonic increasing or decreasing trend in the data as i already said the alternative hypothesis should be opposite to this hypothesis no trend in the null hypothesis there is a trend in the alternative hypothesis so if you reject this null hypothesis you will accept the alternative hypothesis and vice versa now this is uh, the test statistics uh, for each pure observation x j and x k such that j is greater than k so that means j is greater than k of course j is greater you can see here account the signs you know sign of x j minus x k remember j is greater than k so what does it mean by this this means suppose uh k is equal to 1 that means j is greater than k j should be 2 x2 minus x1 x3 minus x2 x4 minus x3 and so on just do this and count you know plus sign and minus sign and zero is of course zero so what is mean by this plus 1 if xj is greater than uh, xj minus xk is greater than 0 or xj is greater than xk okay so if xj is minus xk is greater than 0 this will give you a plus sign of course so plus 1 and 0 if xj minus xk is equal to 0 this will give you a 0 not plus 1 not minus 1 and minus 1 if xj minus xk is less than 0 in this case of course xk is less than uh, xk is greater than xj okay my xj is less than xk so this will give you minus 1 that is statistic s is the sum or all here so then you need to sum all these values okay all these values you know you have this this and this then sum all these values and again you know uh, j is greater than k because k is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 and so on so sum this all values then this will give you know, the overall uh, you know the overall picture will be there whether the minus sign are more or the plus signs are more so you can sum it here and that is test statistic and you can decide what is the sign what is the sign you know it is decreasing or increasing trend but remember that okay this is this is this is now the interpretation here positive s 
This means that if you have more positive sign and less negative sign, at the end you will get positive S. And if you have more negative sign, less positive sign, then of course at the end this sum S will have negative sign. Okay, now positive S mean upward trend and negative S mean downward trend. So this is now you know the interpretation of this test. But normally we don't in this one. But normally we don't use this. We know we we use standardized uh, man-conduct test. So now we are proceeding toward the standardized normal uh, standardized man-conduct test (MK test). That's why we need variance for standardization. We need mean and variance. So we are calculating. Now, variance of S under H naught under null hypothesis. If there is no tied values, then variance of S is equal to n, n to n minus 1, n to 2, n plus 5 divided by 18. n is the sample size, and only sample size is required. You can calculate variance if there is no tied observation. If ties exist or equal values, it just for tired groups. If tired are there, then you can do subtract this component from the, uh, in the numerator here in the variance of S. And the remaining thing they remain similar, that remains same minus this one and divided by 18, where tau i is the number of tiled observation in the ith group. Ith group, uh, in the ith group, uh, tau i is the number of uh, tiled observation in the ith group. So you can do this easily. You don't need to do this manually, the system will do this for you. I mean, or Python, but anyway, you should know what is what what is mean by these quantities. Now, this is the standardized test. Uh, standardized test. Okay, so Z is equal to this one. S minus one divided by variance of S. Uh, F S is greater than zero. So this this is the test statistic. F S is. Uh, I mean, this is the standardized standardized test statistic. F S is greater than zero. If s is equal to 0, this is of course 0, and if this is equal to s plus 1 divided by variance of s, if s is less than 0. So now you are calculating because you have s, you have variance of s. So this depends on these conditions given here on the right side, and you will get a value of the z statistic. The standardized mean conduct test, also why we need standardized mean conduct test? This is just interpretation, the, I mean the detail. The standardized man condal MK test is modified version of the original man condal test that improves its performance, particularly for large samples, autocorrelated data, or uh, data sets with the tied rings. Here is why it's often need. Okay, oh, I, I have not, I did not mention further detail. But you can see that. Uh, you can see, I need to remove this. You can see that uh, particularly, you know, the other things on the other side, but when you have tired observation, tired rings, then in that case, this can give you better result instead of the original man conduct test. And the other advantages are also mentioned here. So decision rule, uh, now when we will accept and will we reject the null hypothesis, Compare, okay, compare Z with the standardized normal distribution. So now you have Z value from here. You will get a Z value from here in this uh, calculation. And now you need to compare Z value with the standard normal distribution. For two tail test at significance level alpha, reject H naught F. So this is a general rule that Z absolute value greater than Z1 minus alpha by 2. If this is greater than this value, you need to see z1 minus alpha by 2 value from the table of standardized normal table. You have a specific value for this case. For specific value of alpha, you will have some specific value of z. So you need a value from here from the table for z1 minus alpha by 2. You can get this value from the table and you can calculate this value you know, by using this test statistic here. So now the compare this value with this and decide accordingly. If this value is greater than, if the z value is greater than z, 1 minus alpha by 2, or z is less than minus z, L 1 minus alpha by 2, remember, okay? Then you reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, accept the null hypothesis. So now it is given for specific value of alpha, uh, that is alpha is equal to 0 0.05, reject H naught F, 
z is greater than 1.96 what is mean by this absolute this mean if z is greater than 1.96 or z is less than minus 1.96 we reject the null hypothesis remember okay and how i got 1.96 remember this i have just this procedure simplify this z1 minus alpha by 2 is equal to z minus 0 0.05 divided by 2 because alpha is 0 0.05 and now just simplify this uh, 0 0.05 divided by 2. This will give you 0 0.025. And this will give you Z 0 0.975. And just look this from this table of standard normal distribution. You will get this one, this value. Okay. I will explain this uh, in two videos uh, how to read standard normal table. So you can go there. The link is given in the description of this video. And you can just go click and you will see that how to see this value. Okay. So this will give you, uh, I mean, we have two pair test by the way. So you can use Z, uh, this value in two direction, 1.96 and minus 1.96. So you have the rejection region on two side, of course. So the rejection region, how to calculate the rejection region, the video, the link to that video is also given in the description of this video. So you can go and watch that video that how we can do this top up thing. And by the way, in the software, you don't need to do this. In SPSS, in R and Python, you do need to do this. You will have a p-value. So if your significance level is 0 0.05, and if the p-value is less than this, you reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than this, you accept the null hypothesis. For less p-value less than the significance level, 0 0.05, reject the null hypothesis. And for greater than, uh, the p will be greater than the alpha then accept another hypothesis so we can decide that very easily according to their rule uh, modified in care test so if there are there are another version of modified in care test you can use that so i'm just giving the theory and uh, i mean just introduction however uh, i will have a separate video if i have got the time if i get the time for time series without correlation the original in care test can give misleading results the modified MK test judge adjusts the variance using effective sample size, reducing type of steroid, and so on. We will do this maybe in the next video. Uh, application. This is the most important thing where you can apply Menkandal test. Climate data, temperature, precipitation, biological variables, e.g. stream flow, groundwater level, environmental uh, indicators, e.g. air pollution, CO2 level, and so on. Okay, so um, this is very interesting test. You can do this for a lot of purposes, particularly in the hydrological data, meteorological data, climate science, and environmental science. You can detect the trend, particularly non-linear trend, and particularly with some circum circumstances when you have tiled ranks, when you have uh, um, less sample size, when you have outliers, and when you have less sample size you can do this type of test this type of test and that's far better than the linear test okay i think this is enough for today and see you in the next video ciao